Having a good understanding of your tools is essential for almost any task you do today. When it comes to drawing shapes or floor plans, Apex provides helpful tools that allow you to draw with precision and in some cases changes the way you approach the task at hand. In this video, I'll cover the alignment tools of Apex and show you some examples of how they're being used today. Let's start with the most commonly used alignment tool called Jump. When I move the cursor next to a point and press J, it moves the cursor to that point, ensuring that my cursor is exactly where I need it to be for attached areas or tracing common walls. So, I'm going to move my cursor to this point, hit J, press J again, and you see the cursor moving to these endpoints. Now, if you have midpoints selected or midpoints on, you can put it near the center of a line and it's going to jump to the center of that line as well. So I'm going to define an area. I'm going to call it deck. Move it close to this point. Hit J for jump. And now my cursor is exactly where it needs to be. You notice that the alignment lights and the indicators show me that I'm aligned. And so I'm assured that now when I establish my point of beginning, my cursor is right where it needs to be and I can continue drawing. I'm going to come 18 feet to the right, 8 feet down, 8 feet to the right. I'm going to come down to this point here. But let's say for a second that you can't read your own handwriting in your notes. And you know that it comes to this point right here. As long as these two lines up here have been drawn correctly, you can be confident that when you press J to jump to that point, that that's the distance it needed to be. And you wouldn't normally finish an area like this, but in some cases you might decide to trace back, especially if it's really complicated and you can't really read the dimensions if you're working off, say, a set of plans or something like that. But in this case, I'm going to use the jump tool to go all the way back to the point of beginning just so you can see it in action. And finally, the last line. And our area is complete. Let's talk about the next alignment tool. In this example, we're working with the same sketch, and I'm going to draw that same deck, but this time I want to use enhanced alignment, or what we call enhanced pop. I'm going to define that area, call it a deck, move it close to this point, hit J for jump, press enter to establish my point of beginning. The way enhanced pop works in this particular example is when I press control and a given direction, it's going to travel in that direction until it comes in alignment with another point. And let's say, for the sake of this example, that we don't know that it's 18 feet. In fact, you can't even see the dimension in the plans or your notes for that matter. But you do see an 8 foot rise and run over here for this angled wall that we had. So, using enhanced pop, I can press control and my right arrow, and it's going to come in alignment with that 4 foot line. And I can press control and the right arrow again, and it's going to travel until it comes in alignment with that 23 foot line giving us a total distance of 26 feet. In this case, we knew that the rise and run is 8 feet, and we need to come back to the left. I can press 8 and the left arrow, and it gives us the actual distance of that wall. So this is one way that you can use reference points in the field or at your desk looking at your notes to determine what the actual lengths of walls would be. So in this case, we have an angled wall, and we said it was 8 by 8, but Let's back up a little bit and say you didn't know that that was 8 by 8. Using other reference points, for instance, we know that that angled wall comes in alignment with this point, and it also comes in alignment with this point. So, using enhanced pop, I can press control and the down arrow, and while I have control pressed down, press the right arrow, and it manipulates that line until you see your 8 foot by 8 foot rise and run, and I can press enter to anchor the line in dimension. I can press control down and it will travel until it comes in alignment with that 22 foot line. And while you wouldn't complete the area this way, you can still use your enhanced pop to come in alignment with other points in the sketch to complete your areas if you wanted to. And that's enhanced pop. The next alignment tool I want to talk to you about is what we call pop or alignment. And it's different than enhanced pop in that it will travel in the given direction until it intersects with another line in the sketch. I've already defined the deck, and the first line is 18 feet to the right. 
And in this example, there is no angled wall. Instead, the next line comes down until it intersects with the 22 foot line. By pressing Control Shift and my down arrow, it will travel until it intersects with that line. Now, I'm going to press Delete. I could have used Enhanced Pop, and by doing so, it would have stopped in alignment with this four foot line. While you could do that, it's not always the best choice of alignment tools because if it's a really complex sketch, there's a chance that you're going to come in alignment with many points and you would have to continue pressing the arrow key until you come into the alignment that you're looking for. In this case, control shift, down arrow, and it will intersect with that 22 foot line and you can anchor your line by pressing enter. Now you can complete your area as you normally would. In an earlier example, we talked about the dangers of not using jump before establishing a point of beginning when drawing attached areas. What you see here is what we were trying to avoid. You see double walls here, or in some cases you would see extra thick lines, or you might see it just like this. It looks like a detached area. Well, what I want to show you here is how you can use alignment tools in conjunction with other functions of the software, such as move area. I'm going to select the area, I'm going to choose move area from the command pad and as you see here the cursor is attached to the area so that you can move it. By moving it close to this point I can press J to jump to it and when I press enter to anchor that area you can see that it now no longer appears detached. You don't see the double walls and you don't see any thick walls. It's exactly the way you wanted it to appear. Now I'd like to show you enhanced alignment in conjunction with move area. In this example, these two areas here on the right represent what we're trying to achieve in terms of alignment. They're the right distance apart from each other and they're aligned on their left sides. What we're trying to do here is move these two smaller areas in alignment with the areas above them as well as in alignment with the area on the right. So, I'll select this first area here, I'll click on move area, and it attaches the cursor to that area. I can press control and my up arrow which will move it in alignment with that area on the right and then the left arrow and it will come in alignment with the area above it. When I press enter to anchor the line it places it in position. Now I can move on to the next area. I select it and this time when I choose move area it placed a cursor down in the lower right corner. That's because for this particular area it was closed at this point. So just know that whenever you go to move an area it's always going to place the cursor where that area was closed. In this case it's in the lower right. But I can press my tab key and when I do that it moves that cursor location to where it needs to be so that you can place it properly. I'm going to press my control key and press my left arrow which will bring it in alignment with the original area and then I'll press the left arrow key one more time and it will come in alignment with the area above it. Now I'll press the up arrow key bringing it in alignment with the other smaller areas and this is exactly where we need it to be so I can press enter and now all my areas match the areas that are on the right. You can also use these alignment tools to place symbols. I'm going to select this garage and click on the blue triangle and if you've included midpoints in your configuration for alignment, all you have to do is place it close to the center of that line, press J, and it'll move the cursor into position, and all you have to do is anchor the icon. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with this corner fireplace. I'm going to rotate it, put it close to this point, press J, and then press Enter, and I can move on. I'm going to do the same thing for this sliding door. I want it right in the center of that 13 foot wall. Press J and anchor it into position. But you can also use distance and direction as well. I can jump to this corner but we also know that it's 2.5 feet to the right so I can type 2.5 and press my right arrow key. When I press enter it places that symbol. I can do this with the windows as well and let's say it's five feet to the right from there. You can go five feet to the right and I can press control and my up arrow which will move it right into alignment with this line. Now I'll anchor that window. I'm going to rotate this window here, put it close to the center of this line, press J to jump to it, and this window here 
is also five feet from this point. So, five feet to the left, control up, and anchor that symbol as well. Many of our users also use alignment tools to make adjustments to their properties so that they square properly. In this example, we have an angled line here when it was really supposed to be straight down. And after looking at our notes, this wall here was really supposed to be six feet shorter than it is. So rather than opening this line and using our editing tools that we discussed in a previous video, I can select this point and I can now move it around. In this case, I can press my control and my right arrow and it will move and make that adjustment to the right. Our alignment indicators show that I'm square and I can press enter to make the adjustment and now the property is properly squared. Let's look at a more exaggerated example of how we can use alignment to square properties. In this case, this point was really supposed to be attached to the end of this 13 foot line here. And over here, we have a wall that was supposed to be in alignment with the bottom of this 7 foot line and in alignment with this 20 foot line. So, I can grab this point here move it close to this point and hit J which will jump to it and then press enter to make the adjustment. I can also come over here to this point and I can press my control key down travel up until it's in alignment with the seven foot line there and to the right until it's in alignment with the 20 foot line above it and press enter and my adjustments are made. Well that's just about all there is for alignment and again these were just some of the examples of how you might actually use them. And as you can see it's a pretty powerful set of tools. Depending on the situation and depending on the type of drawing that you have, you have many different options at your disposal for which to use alignment. Thanks for watching.